All right, good morning. Today, uh, I had to get up a little bit early so that I could get my run in. Um, so yeah, have fun. All right, welcome back accountability crew. Um, this is the accountability project where we condense the pain of personal growth and development. Today, in the tongue, the creative force, um, we kind of dive in a little bit more um, on the, the concept of, of the power within you. Um, and so, chapter two, creative power in you. Um, he's basically using scripture to unpack the idea that when we um, speak and live in alignment with God's word, there's massive power that is unleashed uh, within us. Let um, me use the, the, the concept of Mary, where when, when the angels came and, and said that, hey, um, you're going you're gonna to bear a child as a virgin, and, and she doesn't say that's not possible. She just says, okay, I, I accept what you're saying. How does that work? Um, and, and so the, the, the question of how versus, um, it's not possible is, is saying that I believe what you're saying. I just don't understand how it's going to work. Um, and, and moving forward through that, she was able to, to accept, um, the, the validity of Christ and, and God's word. And, and once she received it into her heart, and spoke out in alignment with what God's will was, um, there, there was phenomenal power that was leveraged from that. And, and then they lay down the foundation of, of ultimately Christ bestowing the, the, the power of the tongue, um, turning those, that authority on earth over to man, and, and laying the foundation using the fig tree, uh, the parable with the fig tree, um, to, to point out that we have the power to both bless as well as curse, um, because we have power over life and death, um, and that power starts from our mouth. Um, so, very, very foundational so far, um, but still using some very good scriptural reference to talk about that power and authority. In five love languages, second chapter today, um, talked about love tanks and the concept of uh, if, if we were to visualize everyone having a, a emotional love tank, kind of similar to a gas tank on a car, um, regardless of how powerful of a vehicle you have, if the gas tank is empty, it's not going to perform properly. Um, and what that means in relationships or emotional stability of a person, as a child, that typically means misbehavior. As, as a spouse, it means being distant or, or, or reserved or... or um, acting retaliatory because their love tank is empty. Um, they're, they, they do things, um, outside of their normal character to try to fill their love tank because it's, it's a need that is as deep inside of us as hunger. Um, it's just not as easy to articulate what we need because most of the time we don't fully understand it. Um, and so understanding this and viewing everyone around us as, as, People who have a tank that that we we are responsible to to fill their love tank, um, and in turn, if we keep their love tanks full, then they'll they'll pour into us um, and and kind of allow our love tank to be full. Um, then you can start to have some interesting dialogue as a couple, um, and and really notice how differently people act when their love tank is getting empty. Um, and then they kind of set the stage to talk about the emotion or the euphoria of falling in love for the next chapter. So look forward to that. But with that, I love you. I appreciate you. Stay accountable and condense the pain. Bloop.